Hey, back with the same image again. We're still working on this portrait. Uh, we're going to look at a different method of selecting the skin. Uh, we've used filters, we've used channel information. This time, I'm going to go across the top. Remember, we use the channel stuff. Uh, we're going to go to select and select color range. And color range will bring up this little dialog box. Uh, it doesn't look too great doing that, but we're going to look at the highlights, which aren't too bad. Uh, Midtones, let's just drop on the drop down menu again, which aren't too good. Um, areas there which you could work on if you're looking for some other kind of retouching work. But the shadows, shadows really gives us a, a good definition between the hair and the skin. White hair, uh, black skin, uh, very good. We could work on that and uh, create a good selection. Uh, if I go across and uh, we decide to use that, I click OK. And we get the marching ants. Um, I can do it a different way. I'm going to go back into select again. I'm going to color range. Uh, we're going to choose the shadows again, but this time let's hit the invert button, and that's going to give us a really interesting uh, selection area to work with, which we'll convert into a mask over here. So if I just click OK, you see the marching ants again. Uh, I'm going to copy this layer, so I'm going to drag it down to the bottom there. And on that background copy, I'm going to add a mask, and our selection is loaded in. So let's Alt click Option click on the mask icon, that'll bring it up on full screen. Uh, we can tidy up this mask, and here I go again, painting away. This is really just a squishy brush I'm just painting on. Uh, you're going to be a much tidier, uh, sharpen and harden your brush up. Uh, think about your opacity and painting there. I really just want to get this done quickly just to show you what you can do. Um, and <laughs> it's not the greatest of jobs, uh, but I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. I then toggle with the X switch to make black my foreground color. So I'm painting 100% overlay and I'm filling in those blacks. And where I spill over onto the white, of course, nothing happens because I'm painting in overlay blend mode. Really uh, a simple little trick there to uh, not damage your whites at all, but just get paint into those black areas. So let's have a look again what we're doing. Uh, we need to convert this to uh, uh, blend mode. Uh, let's just copy this because we've done that bit of work on it. Uh, so drag it down, drag your uh, mask down to the bottom there, new layer icon, and rename it. And that's saved. We can come back to it because we are going to come back to it. Uh, I'm going to change the blend mode of this whole layer to overlay. We're, of course, going to go up and go to a filter, blur, Gaussian or Gaussian blur, however you want to say it. And there we have our dialog box again for the Gaussian Blur. We can change that as much as you want. And you can see one of the problems we're getting there is, of course, is that we're applying a blur to the whole layer. And by doing that, we're actually blurring the mask as well. If I just Alt-click on that mask icon, it can show you. Uh, if we go back in and have a look, there was a sharp mask, and then we applied Gaussian Blur to the whole layer, and it blurred it. And now, I'd like to work with a sharp mask on this, but on a blurred layer. Uh, and there's one way of doing this, and we're going to bin this uh, unsharp mask. Let's just delete that. I'm going to go back into my channels and my saved mask option. I'm going to control click, command click on that. That's going to load the selection. And we'll go back into the background copy layer and we'll click on the mask icon. And that's going to load a sharp mask, as you can see there, into a blurred overlay layer. So we've managed to have a. Uh, uh, a soft image with a sharp mask, but we can then double click in the mask icon. This brings up this new CS6 properties box, and we can change the density of the mask. We can actually feather, so we can apply our own uh, blurring of the mask. We have the opacity as well to work on. So, again, it's giving that uh, lots of different areas of control, really subtle changes in your image, uh, softening as you go. Uh, I'm going to work in this mask area as well, so I've made sure that I'm clicked on the mask icon, the white bounding marks around. I'm going to paint uh, about 50% in black uh, over that area there. Uh, the mask, so let's just alt click on that to show what I'm doing. <laughs> and we go again, painting on the mask. It's so exciting, this. Uh, uh, and uh, I think I should call up the image actually. Let's just click on the image icon there. And you can see probably a bit better if I'm still painting on the mask. And it's just bringing in back in that hair detail. Ooh, let's just uh, take that back up there again. Consolidate it and just paint on that area there. And that's bringing back the hair detail. Reduce that properties box. Uh, so there's our mask. Let's just alt-click on that again. And you can see there we've done a bit of work on it. And that's brought back the hair detail. Uh, and so that's another quick way of uh, just selecting an area to work on. 
Uh, I'm going to take out using the mask again just to get a bit of black in there, take out some of that uh, blurring out of the eyes. Um, not overly sharp, but just taking the blurring out of them, and maybe the teeth as well. So it's just really trying to get that effect on the skin rather than the whole image. Okay, that's been another quick way of selecting skin and blurring it. Uh, thanks for looking, and until next time, bye for now.